Now, if you are studying geometry, and that could include uh, taking a full geometry course, or maybe you're taking a math course that includes some geometry, well, you definitely want to pay attention because what we're going to be doing in this video is solving a very, very common type of circle problem in geometry. Matter of fact, uh, you definitely see these type of problems show up on test as well. Things like the SAT, ACT, GED, uh, teacher certification exam. So if you're taking some sort of exam, whether to get into college or pass some sort of certification, and this exam includes mathematics, well, you want to pay attention because a problem like this could show up on that exam. It's definitely not that uh, uncommon. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on here. So we have a circle and we have these two lines that cross through the circle. Now these are line segments and they're going from one side of the circle to the other. These line segments are called chords. Now you can see here we have some points. So this is point A, this is point B, this is point C, this is point D, and this is point E. And we have some information here that describes what's going on in the circle. So let's go ahead and uh, walk through the information and then we'll get to the problem. So it says AE. Now what that means is distance AE here, okay, this uh, segment of this chord is X plus five. ED, so that's from here to here, point E to point D, uh, that distance is X plus two. BE from here to here is X and then from E to C, uh, that's X minus one. All right, so the question is what is X equal to? All right, so I'm not going to give you, uh, give you any hints at this stage because I want to give you a full opportunity to show off your geometry skills. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then, of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this very common type of geometry circle problem. Uh, again, this is something that you definitely want to understand if you are going to be taking any exams and certainly if you are taking geometry. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so again, we have these line segments that kind of crisscross along or inside of the circle. They're going from one distance uh, to the one side of the circle to the other. They're not extending through the circle like that. That's something different. So when you have a circle and you have a line that goes from one side to another side, that's called a chord. Now here is a pop quiz question for you. What do you think the, uh, now the longest distance, the widest chord in a circle, what do you think that's called? Well, if you're saying, hey, Mr. Two Math Man, would that be the diameter? Well, you would be absolutely correct. So by definition, the diameter of a circle is the longest chord. All right, but uh, this is what we have. We have two intersecting chords, and uh, what's occurring is that we have some segments here. Okay, so uh, this chord right here, uh, this one, as I kind of draw it right there, and we're kind of splitting it, intersected by the other chords. So this segment, and th these are two segments of this long chord right here. And what we have is a lovely formula and it's not too complex and you want to write this down. Now, even if you forget this, um, forget the formula, uh, I hopefully you'll kind of just remember by, you know, how simple it is. But basically this formula is saying the following. Now here we have our chords and we're saying this distance right here is X. Uh, so from B to E would be X and then from E to D, this distance right here is U. So effectively, we have a, I don't know if it's a, that's not a postulate, I believe it's a, a theorem, almost certainly a theorem. And if you don't even know what I'm talking about, theorems and postulates are things that, uh, that we learn in geometry. Okay, there's big differences between them. A lot of students uh, think they're pretty much the same. They're actually, there's a technical difference. But anyways, it's not really that important whether this is a theorem or a postulate. Matter of fact, some of you may know that. I'm pretty sure it's a theorem. Put that into the comment section if you happen to know. But in geometry, you study a ton of uh, properties, um, theorems, I mean like hundreds, okay, of postulates and whatnot. And this is why you have to take notes because you're just not going to simply remember this stuff. But this one here hopefully is intuitive enough that you'll remember it. But anyways, let's go ahead and go through it. So the distance from X right here, B to E, this distance X, 
times uh, this distance u over this entire chord right here, okay, is going to be equal to this chord right here, This its segments, y, uh, t, all right? So hopefully the uh, picture explains it better than actually I do. So x times u right here is going to be equal to y times t. Now, again, y is this distance right here, and t is this distance. So we're, these are the segments that make up this chord. All right, so again, there is a formal theorem. I'm almost positive it's a theorem that goes along with this, but you're not going to remember. You don't have to remember the entire verba uh, theorem you know, um, verbatim, you know, like 100%. What you have to do is remember the concepts. All right, so here is the formula. And uh, But hopefully, some of you are saying, oh, this is not that difficult to apply. Well, let's go ahead and apply this now. All right, now remember, here is our situation. We have these um, uh, segments already defined. I want you to kind of remember this because I'm not going to show you this. AE, this part right here is X plus 5. Uh, ED, which is this part right here, is X plus 2. So you'd write that. BE is X, that's BE, and then EC is X minus 1. All right, so you can see here we have our two chords that um, intersect, and then we have these segments here. And what you want to do is apply this formula with these variable expressions. Okay, so hopefully this is starting to make sense. And here is the situation just to kind of uh, refresh your memory. So you're going to need this, which is basically the information in the problem, and you're going to need uh, this formula right here. And of course, you're going to need some algebra as well. All right, so let's go ahead and put this all together. So it's going to be this times this is going to be equal to this times this. That's what the formula uh, says. And, you know, if you remember it this way, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I just remember exactly how you kind of just, you know, said it. This times this is equal to this times this. Well, that's perfectly fine because that's what you need to solve this problem. All right, so this times this, or is x plus 5 times x minus 1, is going to be equal to x times x plus 2. So now what we have is a lovely algebra equation to solve. Okay, so we're shifting from uh, geometry now into algebra. So even if you remember the formula and you're like, yes, I know how to set this up. Well, now you have to have the algebra skills to solve this. So let's go ahead and get into that right now. Okay, so we have to first multiply these two binomials. So we have x plus 5 times x minus 1. And then over here, uh, we're going to have to use the distributor property, x times x plus 2, to kind of start simplifying this. All right, so we can use the FOIL method right here, FOIL. So what's FOIL stand for? First, outer, inner, last. So x times x is x squared. x times 1, okay, we're just doing the uh, uh, FO. This is, so x and x is the first. And then the outers is x and negative 1. So that's negative uh, x or negative 1x. The inner is 5 times x. And then the last terms of each of these binomials is 5 times negative 1, negative 5. Okay, so over here we have x times x, which is x squared, and x times 2, which is 2x. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we have to go ahead and clean up the left-hand side because we have some uh, uh, terms we can combine. Let me go ahead and just write this right here. So we have x squared minus x plus 5x. Of course, you can clean this up. And we also have this lovely quadratic equation. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description. But they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. So we have x squared minus x plus 5 minus uh, uh, 5. x squared minus x plus 5x. Excuse me, minus 5 is equal to x squared plus 2x. So uh, before we do anything, we want to combine like terms. So now we have negative x plus 5x is 4x. We have x squared plus 4x minus 5 is equal to x squared plus 2x. So right here, 
some of you might have been alarmed. You're like, oh, no, I have to do quadratic equation. I got to do quadratic formula. No, no, you know, uh, uh, this is actually this quadratic situation goes away because we have the exact same x squared on both sides of the equation. So when I subtract x squared from both sides, uh, the x squareds go away. So they kind of drop away in this equation. And we are very happy because we're left with this lovely basic linear equation. Yay. So we have 4x minus 5 is equal to 2x. And most people, I'm pretty sure, can, can solve this nice uh, basic equation. So let's go ahead and solve it right now. So 4x minus 5 is equal to 2x. Now, typically, uh, we like to put the variables on the left and the numbers on the right. So here, I could, I mean, it, I could have done the work and move the 2x over here, but that means I'm going to have to put this 5 on the other side. So that just means I have to take an extra step. So when you have a linear equation or any equation, try to, you know, of course, this comes with experience as well. Try to take the least amount of steps. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my, I only have my number uh, to the left-hand side, right? So what I'm trying to say is that I'm going to leave uh, the number here and I'm going to move the variable over because I have one number. It's already isolated on the left-hand side. So I'm going to get all the variables on the right-hand side. So I have to move, subtract 4x from both sides of the equation. All right, so that looks like this. And then we're going to add down in a column manner. All right, so 4x minus 4x is 0. Negative 5 plus nothing is negative 5. 2x plus negative 4x is negative 2x. Got to be careful with the positive and negative numbers. All right, so let's go ahead and solve for x. All we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. A negative divided by negative is positive, and 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. All right, so that's what x is equal to. And remember, the problem uh, stated, what is x equal to? So don't kind of um, go the extra step and start answering, you know, uh, t you know, like, hey, oh, I know what X is, so I can figure out what this is, this is, and this is. You don't have to do that. Now, you may be asked to do that on an exam. And I'm bringing this up because a lot of students get super ambitious on tests. They're like, okay, I got this answer, and this is this and this. No, 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 no. You have to move on to the next question because you're up against time, right? Time pressure. You know, you only have a certain amount of time on these exams. So, the way you kind of, you know, do well, not only on this problem, but on math exams and pretty much anything in life is focus. You have to be able to focus. This is very, very, very difficult for, I would say, pretty much everybody. Even people that focus really well have to work at it. And I think uh, a lot of people look at someone else and like, hey, that person knows how to focus. Uh, look, it comes so easy to them. No, it doesn't come easy to anybody uh, because it requires discipline. All right. But you have to get in the habit of, you know, of trying to be as focused as possible when you're doing math. Right. That means if you're going to do math, don't look at your cell phone. Try to go to a quiet place. Try to concentrate. All right. Try to focus. But if you can master focusing, boy, you can pretty much do anything. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.